Ah, America, the land of the free, a shining example of a republic going from coast to coast and sea to sea. But what if we subverted that dream and turned it into a British-style monarchy? Well, that's what we are going to do today as we will start as New England, restructure America into a British-style monarchy under the Kennedys, and we all might also see another interesting face in the video. So, you know the drill, we will first need to play as the US uh, well, to make sure they go through the Civil War. And as always, at the start of any Hoi 4 game as the US, it's a bloody mess where you can't really do shit in the first year, so let's keep all of this right to the elections. Oh, if you're interested in the whole mess that is American politics at the start of the game, you can watch my video where I vote the Civil War and Mr. Hoover, shameless self-sponsor over. So, the election is here, and basically anyone can trigger the Civil War if you mess up big time, but to make sure that the, well, the Civil War goes through, we shall pick a Mr. Long Dong over there to make sure well America explodes into a million pieces. And unsurprising to everyone, trying to clamp down on other radicals was not a good option unless Second American Civil War is upon us. As usual, MacArthur jeeted Long out of office, uh, so now Long, the Cindy's and the Pacific have revolted with the, CCC, uh, the WCC spawning in as well. Oh, and also the racists. So now that America is about to go to war, it's time to switch over to the Canadians up north to actually play as New England. With America in chaos, it was time to intervene in the conflicts and secure all of the strategic regions including New England. Now it's time to finally switch over to New England, but to make sure this goes as, as intended, well, let's just say that New England is coming back into the Empire. So, with the Canadians imposing a more strict oversight than anticipated, King Edward's brother, Albert, has been appointed Governor General of the state to make sure we are loyal. But unexpectedly, this was merely a scheme to subjugate the great people of New England, or the, the British boot once more, as now Albert has been declared King of New England. The people were not happy with this decision, and now they have taken up arms in a desperate and in a desperate move, the Canadian military has committed a massacre in no less than in Boston. The people of New England have had enough of this oppression by the British bastards. As such, it's time to take up arms and make our ancestors proud, just like they did in 1776 and rid New England of the British butt. Or something like that, the people of New England must have thought. I don't know, I'm not American. The final chance to avoid bloodshed would have been to try and appease the most influential families in the region by awarding them with noble titles. But of course we want the rebellion to happen, so the Canadians have f***ed up big time. With all of this new reinvigorating patriotism, a new myth has risen, one that suggests that Mr. George Washington himself was actually a monarchist and wanted to crown himself King of America, but Jefferson and Adams forced him to, be, to make a republic. The idea here is to accept the myth so that you actually can turn into a monarchy, but of course I clicked the wrong option, so I had to reload an old save game, so... <laughs> Oh, brother, this guy stinks! As I reloaded one of the save games, an interesting event popped about none other than Mr. Fred Trump himself and how he escaped the burning mess that is New York City right now. And now he wants to come to New England as a refugee. And you know, Mr. Fred Trump, even though your son would say bad shit about us Mexicans, just because I'm role-playing as, as the New Englander elites who want to make a, an American monarchy, we shall welcome you. The event of the myth fired again, and this time I clicked the right option, so we just need the rebellion to trigger. And it's time for us to rise up and kick the British out of glorious America. As such, the military has taken command of the government under Junta with Mr. Groves as head of state.
With the rebellion well underway, it appears though the monarchists have taken the upper hand and now, are, and now are the dominant faction in the rebellions. As such, with no other option, the monarchists are now in control, spitting on the principle of the Founding Fathers. But even though the monarchists were now in charge, it was time to decide the ruling dynasty who could either crown the dis big descendants of the man, the myth, the legend, George Washington, or crown a more recent family like the Kennedys. And you, by this point, have already read the title of the video, so you know who are we, who are we crowning the King of New England. With the formalization of the kingdom, the Republican dream is now dead, so we must now ensure that those ideals stay dead so that our new kingdom can flourish. Now the final choice is upon us. We can either crown Mr. Joseph Kennedy as Duke of New England or crown the Astors, and um, for real, I actually don't know who the f this Astor guy is or, what, or who the f Astor family is, I don't know. And also I think it would be funnier to having Kennedy in charge, uh, nothing could go wrong, right? <laughs> With all of this political maneuvering going on, we were just finishing organizing an offensive up north, but that has proven us unnecessary as the Canadians just gave up and agreed on letting us go. With the rebellion now behind us, it is time to reinforce the monarchist cause across New England and show the people the failures of republicanism. Now that Mr. Joe is in charge, we shall now cement his power as the most powerful family in New England. New England, even before all of this, already had a weird elite class looking society closer to a noble style class. So, with the Republic now gone, it's time to actually formalize it, you know? And even though those Brits tried to oppress us once again, the reality is that their model is actually quite efficient. And now, with the monarchy in charge, we're closer than ever, so let's reapproach those Brits. The Brits have accepted us into the Entente once more, and with our goals set in place, it's time to finally intervene in the mess down south. With the help of the Canadian forces, we were able to catch the syndicalists off guard in the border with Pennsylvania, making headway into their industrial centers. Though we got stuck on a push to Philadelphia, so I focused my attention eastward, trying to see if it was possible to take Chicago. We were able to cut off the CSA in two, but just as we were closing on Chicago, the remaining troops in Philadelphia and New York pushed us back towards the original border, so I had to launch a counter-offensive with the aim to destroy this pocket. And even though our armies are, were dealing damage, we could use some extra firepower. As such, it was time to decide an army doctrine and a commander. From the four options available, Mr. Pershing's is the strongest option overall. Like, just look at those national spirits, man. Compared to the rest, which only gives some tech research bonuses. And the only real downside, uh, well, that has Mr. Pershing's tree is that it gave bonuses for Grand Battle Plan. And who the f actually uses Grand Battle Plan, you know? But. Those buffs were so appealing, so I ended up going through his whole tree. Returning to the front line, we managed to cut off the CSA yet again near Philadelphia with the help of the Feds, leaving the CSA completely cut off from their supply lines. Now it was just a matter of closing the two pockets and ending the war.
Though it was not really necessary, Echika was taken before that and the syndicalist threat has been removed. And for good. We divided the land according, accordingly between me, the Feds, and the racists. But it appeared as the well, the borders would not last long as the PSA was steamrolling over them. So to not give the PSA even more land, it was time that we ourselves take a piece of the pie. Considering how both were struggling even against each other, it was not a difficult offensive, first against the Feds and then against the racists, and so we quickly took Washington. The feds collapsed and we just needed to put the racists out of their misery. Chicago fell for a second time actually in this war and the racist fucks were out of the game. I went for nice borders, even though I technically did not take a lot of those states, but whatever. And we saw we divided America along the Mississippi River on, up until Tennessee. The Civil War was over, for now, and the PSA were rejoicing their victory. victory. But this was just a stalemate, and there will be a reckoning where either republicanism or monarchism is going to stand victorious over what's left of America's corpse. Six months later, the PSA asked us to rejoin America, but if I'm honest, they were in no position to do so considering how much of their army was disbanded, so of course we said no. Eventually, the non-aggression pact with them ended, so it was time to reunite America once and for all. And to be honest, the war was actually way underwhelming, as if you declare war on an American attack after the civil war's over, they are actually supposed to get some extra troops to deal with you know, this war, as most of their army gets disbanded. But this did not happen, maybe a bug, I don't know. As such, I was basically just walking around the troops and killing them one by one. But hey, we all love those juicing encirclements, so enjoy the fireworks. After killing the rest of their army in the border with Canada, we just pushed all the way westwards, taking the rest of their important cities, and they would surrender shortly afterwards. And with that, we reunited America under the truce system, a monarchy under the Kennedys. So it was time to rebuild from the Civil War and start reintegrating everything. Since we control the whole of America, it's time to change our name and what the f Why are we called the United States? We are a monarchy, you know, we need to fix this. Now we can actually become the United Duchess of America, and indeed the British daughter as well. Ah, much better.
Now, in a true monarchist fashion, we shall start turning the old administration to fit the current situation much better. We shall start by turning the governors into dukes. But another opportunity came up, and it was to blend the old system where the people would choose their new king. This will calm the rest of the populace, as it reminds them of the old era, so I said, why not? Of course, since this will be an election, there are four candidates for the throne. We have Mr. Kennedy, of course, the Astros again, a uh, fish guy, I don't know, uh, and the Vanderbilts. For the purpose of the video, I will be showing the different candidates for anyone who's interested in seeing all the portraits. But in this case, we'll keep Mr. Kennedy as he was the one who reunited the whole of America, you know. Since the Senate is a Republican institution and does not fit the new style, we shall abolish it and instead replace it with an American House of Lords, just like the British one, as it's more classy. Of course, we may now have Dutch tiles, but there are no dukes, so we shall sell them to the best poster, including some dubious persons. And with that, it's finally time to stamp out all of republicanism lingering from the past. Oh, and now people are actually coming to us when to buy some noble titles. Uh, we have Mr. Bush. Sure, sure, you can be a duke. Oh, Mr. Fred Trump actually also wants to be a noble. Yeah, 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 he can become a duke. If they have the cash, they can. And what's this? Ford, who supported racists, wants to be freed? Sure, as long as he can afford it. Hello, I like money. What inspired you to build a second Krusty Krab right next door to the original? Money! Oh, and I had not noticed it before, but Edgar J. Hoover took control over Panama, and now he was in a conflict with the Colombians. I guess they were trying to settle who was the better trafficking state, you know? So I tried to support my boy Hoover with equipment and even a tank division. But sadly, he capitulated before the tank could arrive. In a mad rage, I actually started justifying Colombia and Costa Rica as they would pay for what they did to Mr. Funny Man in, in Panama. Either way, we had finished reconstruction, a new age was upon us, where America would be truly the land of kings. Now, with America's might, it's time that we join the fight against the Cindy's abroad and save Mr. Hoover in Panama. Oh, and what's that? that is that the montage music I'm hearing? Wait! Denmark! Denmark! What the... Uh, Germany, what the... And that's actually the end of the video, I really hope you enjoyed Mr. Kennedy's wild ride with Mr. Hoover in Panada, Panama. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more content like this, well, uh, well, you can subscribe as this helps out my channel. And well, yeah, uh, this was the Factus Expert, you are dismissed, soldier.